I, I didn't want to have to tell you this, but the hair products we're using might be causing our acne. But before you go ahead and throw away all of your products, don't freak out and stay tuned. What's good everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's me, curly hair specialist, hairstylist, and your main girl, Mel, who also struggles with acne. Although 99.9% .9 of the content on this channel is dedicated towards hair care, you know, the dead strands of keratin fiber that may be curly that also hang dangerously close to our face. Well, it just might be that some of the hair care products that you and me have been using could be perpetuating or at least definitely not helping the conditions of our skin. We have got a lot to cover today, including getting a little nitty gritty and scientific about what it means to be comedogenic, why and how our products might be the cause of a little bit of acne. And of course, I'll be sharing lots of solutions. I've got tons of pro tips and tricks up my sleeves. And I'm also really excited that I partnered with Scene. You may have seen them on this channel before when last year me and my sister, while we were on the hunt for fragrance-free products, found this brand, tried them, fell in love with them. Scene is a dermatologist-founded, skin-caring, fragrance-free, non-comedogenic hair care brand that was developed for skincare. Fast forward to now, I'm gonna tell you guys about a new product that they are launching today that is called the Magic Serum, which is a very unique product and may be very beneficial for you if you are a little acne blemish prone like me and are afraid of putting oils on our hair, which can be so beneficial, but scary for our skins. So we'll talk a little bit more about this soon. So without further ado, let's pop into it. Pop into it, like pop like a pimple, except don't pop your pimples. Not all types of pimples are the same and the acne and blemishes caused by cosmetics and hair products also look a little bit different. So first things first, if you are not sure if maybe the products that you are using are causing your acne, here's a few things that you may want to look out for. She will tell you. Finally, not to get nitpicky, but I have been bursting to get nitty gritty and scientific. Hi, I'm Melly, and acne, acne of all forms, have one thing in common, and this is clogged pores. Now the specific acne associated with our cosmetics is called acne cosmetica. It's not that, it's pretty straightforward. Now, cosmetics are not only makeup, but hair care as well. And the American Academy of Dermatology describes hair products to be the cause of this comedonal acne that appears on the forehead, neck, cheeks, back, crack, nope, all around our hairline. And these show up as these tiny little flesh-covered bumps that are known as closed comedones. Now, comedones can also be open, also known as Blackheads, you may be more familiar with these terms, blackheads and whiteheads on our face, known as pain in my ass, one and two. Mm. Keep it together, it's fine. This is the type of acne that is most commonly seen and created by the use of cosmetics. But unlike things like pustules and cystic acne, they are very surface level, very surface, little baby, little tiny, little pustule, little pain in my things. <laughs> well, damn! Now that we know what the acne caused by hair care looks like, how is this actually happening and how can we avoid it? Well, Mel, a study done by dermatologist Dr. Iris Rubin, who is also the founder of Scene Hair Care, found that the mechanism by which hair care products contribute to acne may be through the residue that they leave on our skin. This chart shows us the amount of residue left over from products that are rinsed off, like shampoos and conditioners, 30 minutes after treatment, one hour after treatment, even two hours after the treatment, you can see that products live on our skin longer than that short time we are in the shower. And as for leave-in stylers, it has been shown to leave residue on the skin for up to four hours after the styling process. It's kind of gross. Now these findings may be able to explain the acne cosmetica and comedones 
on both the skin and body from hair products which are not tested for their comedogenicity. Kamara, humara, horaba! Yeah! As in, the products that people may be using may contain ingredients that are comedogenic and problematic for the skin's health and conditions and clogging and pustules. I just wanted to say pustules. Also, sebum. If you naturally have an overproduction of sebum like me bum, <laughs> I'll see you at the door. Ah. Comedogenic ingredients. Is this the problem? with our hair care? Should I start analyzing all my products for these ingredients and chucking them? Well, just you wait, because there's some tea about. I do wanna interject when it comes to reading your ingredient list. There's one more thing you should look out for. Now, while picking apart an ingredient list and trying to understand it may be a little unsuccessful and also a toxic trait, step back from the bottle it's not a bad idea to take a look at the first seven ingredients of a product. The first seven ingredients listed on a product label are going to have the highest concentration in your formula. Just keep that in mind and take a look at the first seven ingredients, if anything. So thanks, Melly. I've got it from here. I've also got some very good information from an, a real scientist. If you have not heard of, seen, watched, or follow Lab Muffin Beauty Science, then you absolutely should. She is a cosmetic chemist. A while back, she did a whole video explaining comedogenicity of ingredients. Ingredients that are ranked on a scale from zero to five that were originally tested on bunny ears and in the studies that just were not accurate to real life on a human face. If you're interested in learning more about that, you should definitely watch her video. I'll link it in the description box below. But some of the most important things that you need to know is just because an ingredient is rated number five extra high, super comedogenic, that ingredient on its own, it may cause you to clog your pores, but when that ingredient, let's say for example, coconut oil is formulated into a product, things change and it might not be as comedogenic as it once was. Which means just because there's a little bit of, for example, coconut oil in a product doesn't specifically mean that it is going to cause acne. In the right formula, they can be totally fine. However, on the flip side, <clears throat> some combinations of products might become comedogenic. Sometimes when there's a lot of different ingredients in a formula, certain combinations might become comedogenic or the formula in general could become irritating, especially if you have very sensitive skin and very acne prone skin. There's more likelihood of irritants being in the formula the more ingredients that there are in the formula. So what can we do? Well, I know in the past I bought makeup that has said non-comedogenic on it, but wait, because there's one more thing. Non-comedogenic is not an FDA regulated term, meaning that just because a product might claim to be non-comedogenic doesn't actually mean that it, it means, well, we could hope, one could hope. There's a bit of an honor system situation happening there, you know, that brands are making correct claims. But as consumers, we have the control to choose which brands we shop from. So as long as you do your research, trust the brands that you shop from, and listen to professionals like chemists and dermatologists and people that back their claims up by science, then I foresee that we should be acne free uh, soon. Anyways, seen as the brand has been founded by a dermatologist who actually, Dr. Iris has tested all of her products on her face to truly test the comedogenicity of each and every one of her products that she's ever put out. It's the dedication for me. Couldn't be me. And finally, they've been working on their new magic serum for a very long time before they finally launched it, which mm, I have been using this for a couple of months now and I'm really excited to talk about it because as someone with oily acne prone skin who does love her hair oils. I could not give up my hair oils and serums. This magic serum looks like an oil, feels like an oil, but it's not quite oil. It is a non-comedogenic formula with only three ingredients. This serum has an ultralight feel on both the hair and the skin. It completely absorbs in and does not leave you with any form of residue. 
and without residue depending on how you choose to use it. This product can be cocktailed into deep conditioners to make them even more nourishing, which I can confirm worked because I've used their Scene Deeper Conditioner on its own before. And when I cocktailed a dropper full of the Magic Serum into my deep conditioner, it was, it worked truly even deeper. But my favorite way to use the Magic Serum and any hair oil or serum is on my dry hair. So after I have used my curl cream, to define my curls. I've set my hair in place with a mousse or a gel, dried my hair. It is at that point when I like to finish my hair with my oil or serum to soften out any crunchy casts and also to prevent frizz and flyaways from occurring, defend against humidity, and add some extra shine. Of course, the serum is also fragrance-free. It is cruelty-free, it is vegan, as is the rest of the brand and everything that they stand for. On top of, of course, standing by the fact that they are skin caring and will not clog our pores. And I just wanna say I'm genuinely so impressed by these formulas because you know our skin, which is alive, is very different from our hair, which is dead. Really knew what she was doing here. She did. And if you are interested in seeing a routine, I do encourage you on seeing the video that I posted with my sister last year in a fragrance-free routine, which you can see a little bit more of a styling routine and the other products I really like, like the Curly Cream, which I reach for very often. My bottle is almost done. She's fabulous. I love her. And I love you, so I want to leave you with some final tips, products aside, things that we can do and implement into our daily routines to prevent our hair products from touching our skin. Okay, we want, we want social distancing. That is not cute. That was too rushed. I look like a buffoon. But for real, here's seven things that you can do to prevent acne breakouts from your hair products. Tip number one, wash your body after washing your hair. Number two, rinse your hair from the conditioner in the sink. Okay, if you're like, if you're weird like me, we talked about this, it's fine. It's very key, it's very helpful so that your conditioner's not running all over your body. Plus it gets to sit in a little longer, it's great. On that note, number three, Wash your face and do your face skin routine after you've already applied your hair products, which if you can, number four, style your hair away from your face. Okay, no bangs. Off the face, keep it back, keep it up, keep it wrecked. Okay, sleeping with a bonnet is tip number five so that your hair doesn't rub all over your pillowcase, which of course touches your face. Also, number six, wash those pillowcases at least twice a week. And number seven, try not to put hair products too close to your scalp, which I remind you is skin, unless you are using skin caring and skin friendly approved products. But I can say from firsthand experience that having acne isn't easy. Uh, it's not an easy fix either, but consistency in our skincare routines and even our hair care routines and implementing these tips and tricks can truly help to manage things. You are beautiful. Your face is a work of art. I hope you found this video pretty helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you have been on the hunt for a super lightweight, simple formula, but magical oil serum for your hair, then definitely check out the Magic Serum that will also be linked in the description box below. And while you're down there, comment if you have an extra tip for me or someone else. Be kind. We are, we are kind here, especially when it comes to skincare. It's a touchy subject, it's fine. But also I'd love to hear any tips and tricks that you have. I'd also love to hear what other videos you'd like to see, so make sure you leave those in the comment section below. Subscribe so you can see them. This has been your main girl now. And signed to be Melly. Thanks, fam. And we are out. Peace. Okay, acne. Just a little bit of acne. It's just a little bit of acne. It's just a cup of pimples. It's just a little bit of acne. Eh. I'm sweating. Hashtag no makeup, hashtag no filter. Not now, not ever. But there was a fluff. And, um, you know, I've always really liked pepperoni pizza. No, it's fine. I don't know. Yes! Hi! Finally! Not to be nitpicky, but I have been bursting to get scientific. Nitpicky. Nit snicky. Snooky. JWow. Sammy. Dina? Not Angelina. 
If you don't understand that reference, it's probably best if we're not friends. I don't know. Angelina! Dirty little hamster. Where did the top of my head go? At this point, I am D4 of my hand. No, I'm D. Yeah, I'm D4. Where did the time go? This is day four of my hair and it's still looking so good. It feels really nice. I did it, ma'am. Peace! Peace! Please! Please, I need air in this room. I'm, I'm sweating so bad. I'm sweating up a whole damn storm.